Hello, today I'm sharing with you my top non-essential luxury sewing items. If you do enjoy this video and you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. So I'm sure you all know there are loads of different sewing gadgets and tools out there, all with different uses, um, some very specific, some extremely versatile, and it's quite difficult to navigate which ones you, you need, which ones you don't. Um, and which ones would just make your life so much easier. So today I'm going to share the, the ones that I have in particular that I know are not essential at all. You definitely don't need them, but they're, they're quite nice if um, someone's asking you what you want for Christmas or for your birthday or just as a, a treat in general. Um, most of these are ones which I probably have received as a gift and I'm very appreciative of them. So I'm going to share six different tools with you. Tool number one is the bias binding foot. So the bias binding foot I've had for a number of years now I think I actually um, nabbed this one off my mum who'd bought this online um, and I ended up acquiring it. Um, so it's really handy for attaching bias binding obviously. I wouldn't say it's essential because obviously you can attach bias binding using a regular sewing machine foot. Using the bias binding foot, um, depending on the item you're making and what you're covering with bias binding, it can produce a really neat clean finish. Um, essentially you can adjust it, there's a little section here where you can slide it across depending on how wide your bias binding is. So you can see they've got um, some metric markers for the width here, so it's got 5mm, 10, 15, 20. The main places where I've used this before is when I've made bath hats, um, which I've got a bath hat pattern over on Etsy. Um, on that it's really useful because um, you're just attaching bias binding on the brim of the bath hat and it's really easy to just stitch down the side. It means that you don't have to stitch on one side, fold it over and then stitch down, um, top stitch all the way around. It just does the top stitch section through both layers and applies it. You do have to be careful and make sure that your fabric is positioned properly into this tool so that it's slotted um, right into where the, the uh, guide is. If you don't do that, then there is a lot of unpicking to do. <laughs> so. I'd say it's not essential because obviously you can just use your regular sewing machine foot to attach bias binding and actually nowadays I do prefer the finish where you stitch one side, the first side, with your sewing machine then you turn it over and I do like to hand sew finish it now and then you just have a really nice clean edge um, but obviously again you can just um, flip it over and top stitch it so I guess in a way you save a bit of thread by using this tool and it does save you a lot of time um, it just depends really what you're doing quite an affordable luxury item but like I say it depends what finish you want and sometimes especially if it's a really bulky say you're using thick wadding um, it's gonna be quite hard to get into this gauge so it's not always useful luxury sewing item number two is the seam gauge so I really like this seam gauge I've had it for a couple of years now it's really handy, it's got, this is a metric one by the way, you can also get an imperial measurement one. Um, I just think it's really useful because it's got all your main measurements that you'll need, so obviously one and a half centimetres, which is five eighths of an inch. Um, that's the common one you'll find on your sewing patterns, but it also has one centimetre, which I guess is a bit more common if you're sewing with a knit pattern. Uh, six centimetres, I think that's a standard hem. There's also four centimetres here, which you come across, and two centimetres is quite common as well um, for certain seams on your garment. I also use this grid where we've got um, the six centimetres, so it has all the lines for the millimetres and I do use that sometimes um, for quick reference. I just find this tool a lot easier to use, um, but of course you can just use a tape measure. Um, most people have got a tape measure there, obviously a tape measure is a lot more versatile because you can, you know, measure yourself, you can measure other people with it, or um, items, say like the water bottle um, carrier I made, you can, you know, wrap a tape measure around the item that you want to measure, whereas this obviously is very specific to um, marking out smaller items or, you know, um, pressing. But I do use it a lot to press and mark seams just because it's a lot, I guess it's a lot firmer than the tape measure on that side. Because I use it a lot more for pressing, um, especially, you know, when you're folding up hems or um, pressing so that you can see the seam allowance or even marking the seam allowance because it's just a lot firmer than a tape measure. In the past I have accidentally ironed over a tape measure and I'm not sure how accurate it is anymore. I'm not sure how well they can withstand 
higher heat levels so um, whereas this I kind of feel like you know it's going to stand the test of the sewing machine at all heat levels or it hasn't faded anywhere and I've definitely ironed over it by accident so yeah I just find it's a nice consistent way to um, use it in that way. This is probably the cheapest um, tool that I'm sharing with you and I'd say it's a really useful one so if someone is looking for a little gift for you this is the perfect suggestion if you don't have one already. Moving from cheap and cheerful to very luxuriously expensive <laughs> is this Fiskars cutting tool. So this was definitely a gift. Um, I haven't had it as long, I've had it less than a year and essentially it's a fabric guillotine so you place this over your fabric it's got a little so essentially you place this over your fabric using um, a cutting mat like this one and you line it up to where you want it to be and then you apply pressure to this and cut across so obviously this is amazing if you're a quilter because you can just cut straight lines really easily with it. Um, you can also cut quite a few layers of fabric in one go which is handy as well. I've also used it in dressmaking so if there is a really flat um, hem say or some of the sides it can be useful to cut those um, but particularly you know quilting but making bags any accessories and that if it's a straight line um, you know I made a cushion recently and you can just really easily and accurately cut out straight lines which is amazing. The easiest way to replicate this in a much cheaper fashion would be to just have a, a regular ruler or even a quilting ruler like this which would still be a lot cheaper than this. Um, yeah literally a quilting ruler and your rotary cutter so that would be simple. I guess the advantage here is that it's fixed to this bar so you can sometimes veer off of it even when you're using a ruler um, that's on its own but Again, this obviously is a lot cheaper than this. Even the rotary cutter and the ruler is more luxury, you know, you could literally go for scissors and marking out the line. Okay, so I may have jumped the gun by saying that the seam gauge was the cheapest item on my luxury sewing items list, um, because number four is one of these, which is one of those sort of push out the corner tools. So yeah, this is really useful. It's got a nice honed point so that you can push out those corners without hopefully jabbing a hole in your fabric as you try and push out the corners. I've used it plenty of times, um, it was a gift and I was, I'm very appreciative of it. Again the reason I put it as a non-essential is because I'm sure there are plenty of things you could find around the house to poke out your corners. I used to use um, a spare knitting needle quite a lot although to be honest I used to end up poking a hole into the fabric a lot of the time when I did that so it's not the most recommended tool for um, pushing out corners. Luxury sewing tool number five is the chalk pen. I've put this down as a luxury tool because obviously you can just use regular tailor's chalk. You do not need it in a handy pen dispenser but it is very useful. I find that with the regular um, tailor's chalk sometimes I end up breaking off bits of it. I really like this one because it came with a range of colours so you can quite easily, um, if you hold it on the top, you can change the chalk colour you've got in there. It also um, produces quite a nice accurate line which obviously over time the other tailor's chalk that's in a triangle or a square, it does wear out. Obviously you can then sharpen it to a point again but I guess this is always ready to go and it's quick. Um, but it is definitely a luxury, it's, you don't need it to dress make. <laughs> and finally, luxury item number six. I've kind of combined two here because it's the mini ironing board and iron set. Uh, again, pretty straightforward why it's a luxury item. If you've already got an ironing board, you don't need a mini one. And again, if you've got an ironing board, you've probably got a regular iron, in which case you don't need a miniature iron. Obviously, if you do live somewhere where you don't have a lot of space, um, then by all means a mini ironing board is definitely not a luxury item and it's beneficial, it means it takes up less room. Um, and also this is actually a really good iron so you know it would obviously take you a lot longer to iron your own clothes but it's definitely doable. I find both of these really useful just because 
I can just set it up on this table here. It means I don't have to keep dashing out to the other room to iron. I sometimes do put the iron in this room, but obviously I do share this room with my partner who sometimes likes to use this computer. So um, I don't think he always appreciates having an ironing board right behind his chair, which is obviously a bit dangerous. So it's a lot safer if I use um, this ironing board. Um, so yeah, the ironing board comes up like this. Um, this was from Ikea and I think this this says it's an Anzio. But yes, and this does steam as well so you can add water to it. And it's really handy if you've got something small, especially if you're doing a project, you know, um, like when I was making my bag or the water bottle carrier or the purse. You know, it's, it's a lot of faff to bring out the big ironing board and iron um, so you can save a bit of time by um, just popping out the mini set and then you can leave it up while you're doing a project so it's quite handy especially if you know you are short on time or like me you've got a chronic health issue sometimes um, cutting those little corners can make it so much easier for you to um, get on with a craft project um, but like I say if you're really short on space and money you really don't need it if you do have a regular iron and ironing board so that's it for today I'm sure there are plenty of other non-essential tools that I've got I've definitely got lots of sewing paraphernalia here so I'm sure there's plenty of other things that I haven't mentioned here but I thought that would be a good snapshot for you. I hope you enjoyed this and thanks for watching.